I received not one, not two, but five offers from top tech companies as a new grad. In 2014, I graduated from Stanford's computer science program and received offers from Facebook, Twitter, Google, Microsoft, and Square. In this video, I'll share the exact details of every offer I received, my negotiation strategy, and we can calculate the market value of each offer today. I've debated for a while whether I should make this video or not, but after weighing the pros and cons, I decided to go ahead and do it because I'm not working in big tech anymore, and I'm instead working on my own company, which is designed to help software engineers. Compensation is inherently a charge topic. On one hand, people might think you're overpaid, and they might treat you differently or have expectations of you, or they might think you're underpaid, in which case they'll judge you or your work. So why am I sharing all these details, especially at a time when our economy isn't doing that well, and I know people are struggling? It's because I genuinely think this information will help people. First, I do think there's value in having concrete data points rather than looking at aggregated generic data. In this video, we'll give you five concrete data points along with a narrative behind each one. Second, unlike most videos about compensation, the offers I received here happened eight years ago. And so we can actually model out how much they'd be worth today, which I think is really instructive. Finally, I think more awareness is always better. Most people aren't aware of how high compensation can get in tech. And if even one person can meaningfully change their career or compensation because of this video, it'll be worth it for me. With all that said, I do wanna offer a warning. The offers I received as a college graduate were on the very high end back in 2014, and those numbers would still be considered high today probably 95th percentile or higher. So if you feel like you'll be upset by the unfairness of how a 22 year old could make that much money, I suggest that you stop watching this video now. Honestly, your mental health is more important than this YouTube video. Okay, with all the virtue signaling out of the way, now we can dive in. I already made a video about how compensation in tech works, so I'm not gonna cover that here, but if you're interested, I'll leave a link for that in the description. It's funny how three out of the five companies I got offers from have changed their name since 2014. Facebook to Meta, Square to Block, and Google to Alphabet. So throughout the video, I'm gonna to refer to the companies based on what I had known them back in 2013, 2014. To kick things off, in summer 2013, I interned at Facebook. At the last day of your internship, the recruiter would tell you whether you got a return offer or not. I remember being so happy and so relieved when I got that confirmation that I did indeed get the offer and the recruiter told me the numbers, $115,000 base salary, $75,000 signing bonus, 125K in equity over four years, and a 10% target annual bonus. This translated to 229,000 in year one and 154,000 in each subsequent year between two and four. As someone who grew up in Michigan, these numbers were mind boggling. The 75K signing bonus alone was more than what many people I knew made in a whole year. And you'll actually see how that number goes up significantly later on in the video. Now the internship ends and the school year starts, Stanford has a rule that companies can't force you to reply to their offer until November. So I had a few months of time to interview. The next offer I received was from Twitter, which had a base salary of $125,000, $15,000 sign-on bonus, and 10,000 restricted stock units. When I got the offer from Twitter in October, it was still a private company. And the fair market value of a stock was about $20, which meant that the total compensation for year one would be about 190,000, and each year thereafter would be 175K. What's really interesting here is that Twitter gave me a certain number of stock in the offer as opposed to a dollar value. And that becomes really important later on in the story. Next, I received an offer from Microsoft, which I was really happy about since I had been rejected by them three times already. And their offer was $110,000 base salary, $100,000 worth of RSUs over four years, a $50,000 sign-on bonus, and a 10% target annual bonus. The recruiter did tell me that this was one of the best new grad packages they could give, but it was meaningfully lower than Facebook. They were offering a total compensation of $196,000 in year one, and then every year after that was $146,000. And the other thing about Microsoft was that most of the open positions were actually in Seattle. And why would anyone in their right mind choose to go up to dreary, rainy Seattle when they could pick the Bay Area? And so I very quickly actually turned down Microsoft. The fourth offer I got was from another Jack Dorsey company, Square. And I was actually pretty borderline here. They had to call me in for another interview after my onsite because they, were, they weren't sure if they wanted to hire me or not. The salary here was $105,000. They gave a $10,000 sign-on bonus and they gave 3,600 options as part of the offer. At this point, Square was still private, but the recruiter told me that those options would be worth around $180,000 given the fair market value. To keep things simple, my thinking at the time was let's treat Square as liquid stock, which meant that the total compensation in year one would be $160,000 and $150,000 in each year after that. I remember hopping on the phone with the recruiter from Square, and she told me that you know if Square gets to be a $7 billion company, then those options would be worth $400,000. And I was very skeptical that Square could actually become that big. The final offer I got was from Google, which had a really long gap between when I interviewed and when I actually received the numbers. So in mid-November, the recruiter shared with me the initial numbers from the Google offer, which were $105,000 base salary, a $50,000 sign-on bonus, and 250 Google stock units. 
along with a 15% annual target bonus. The timing here is really fortuitous. On November 7th, Twitter went public and the shares popped in the IPO 72% and the Twitter stock went up to $44 a share. All of a sudden, my Twitter offer became way more valuable. And I literally wrote to the Google recruiter, Twitter is attractive because of, the, of their large equity grant, while Facebook has a very significant signing bonus. If Google could offer a reasonable compromise, that would be very compelling. And within a week or two, they amazingly came back to me and they did that. The recruiter got back to me with a $40,000 sign-on bonus and 400 Google stock units. So the sign-on bonus did go down 10K, but the equity grant went up 60% to 400 instead of 250 Google stock unit. And at that point, that was worth $424,000. <laughs> that meant my year one compensation at Google would be $271,000. And each year after that was $231,000. I remember talking to a couple friends about this and the stocks I received were more than triple the standard equity package at Google. And that was all because I was able to negotiate. At this point, I was riding on a high and I finally decided to go back to the Facebook recruiter and tell them about the Google and Twitter offer I had received. And it's interesting because at the end of the summer, I was very, very happy with the Facebook package, but I didn't even realize that there could be so much more if I had just gone out and interviewed. And so within a week after hearing how compelling my other offers were, Facebook came back and increased my signing bonus from 75K to $125,000. I was already amazed in September when Facebook gave me the return offer how high the compensation could get, but now this was unreal. Like literally, I had a hard time believing that someone graduated from college could make this much money. So those were the five offers I received as a new grad in 2014, but now we can look at how much would those offers be worth today. And in particular, that boils down to the growth in the stock price. So assuming I joined the company in mid-2014, it's been about eight years since I would have joined the company. Starting with the lowest multiple, Twitter is basically unched or unchanged from 2014. It has really underperformed relative to other peer tech companies. Next is Facebook, now known as Meta, and its stock has gone up 2.7 times since 2014. Although at one point, at the all-time high, it was trading almost 5.8 times what it was. Google and Microsoft are pretty similar. Google's gone up about 5x and Microsoft 6x, which is actually really amazing given how big the companies were already back in 2014. And now they're multi-trillion dollar companies. They're ginormous. Finally is Square, which I discounted at the time, but it has actually grown tremendously, about 10 times since the value in 2014. And if you consider the all-time high, which is $275, the stock had gone up at one point 38x what it was in 2014. And that really starts to get into life-changing FU money. Given this information, now we can do an interesting TC total compensation comparison, assuming I had never sold the stock. So what I have plotted here is the TC for each offer given the share price back in 2014, averaging out the sign-on bonus over four years and assuming a 10% annual raise. And honestly, that's probably being a bit too conservative because if you're a high performing employee at one of these tech companies, you will certainly get promoted, you'll get a stock refresh, and you'll probably get even higher bonuses. But now let's look at what the compensation actually turned out to be given the growth in the stock price. Facebook and Twitter are by no means bad offers, ending up around $250,000 a year, but their stocks haven't gone up as much as the others. Twitter stock in particular has stagnated, so even though their initial equity grant was huge, it didn't actually add up to that much in the end. Facebook stock did better, but their initial equity grant for new grads was pretty low. Similarly, Microsoft's initial equity grant was the lowest among all the offers I received at $100,000 over four years. And so despite the company being dominant under Satya Nadella since 2014 and going up in value 6x, the total compensation is still lower than the others. Square is such an interesting case because the company really took off during COVID in 2020, but for the first few years after the IPO, it languished. If I had joined Square back in 2014, there's a really good chance I probably would have sold a bunch or all the equity that I had vested after the IPO. But assuming I had held it through COVID, then that initial offer from Square would now be worth $570,000 a year. And finally, Google is such an outlier here. Given that I had a huge equity grant back in 2014 and the company has done so well in the past eight years, that initial offer would today be worth $680,000 a year, which is a huge, huge amount of money. The first takeaway from all this is that tech compensation is very high. Too many people make a rash decision about not working in big tech and instead wanting to freelance, build a startup, or God forbid, become a YouTuber. From a financial perspective, these are almost always the wrong decision. If you're in the US and you have access to these big tech companies, you should at least consider them. The second takeaway is that you can and should negotiate. 
The way you negotiate is by having leverage. And the way you have leverage is by having multiple offers. In particular, if you have a job offer from Google, what you should do is go to a newly public tech company, which will likely give you a higher equity compensation, and then use that to go back and have leverage with Google. And there's a good chance that you can get 100K or more in extra equity. Think about it as if you're doing an extra couple hours of work, but you have a very meaningful chance of having a much, much higher total compensation. If you hear the numbers in this video and feel dejected, I want the transparency to be aspirational rather than depressing. If I can do it, I promise you can do it too with enough time and effort. The companies I talked about in this video are huge and they hire lots of people. Also, keep in mind that our careers are long. If you don't happen to get a bunch of offers in college or as a new grad, don't worry about it. Focus on building a good network, getting some experience, and doing good work. There will always be a lot of opportunities later on in your career to switch companies. I had to fail many, many interviews before I got to the point where I was actually passing them consistently. And in fact, I made a video about four years of internship struggles that I went through that I'll link in the description. Finally, I've spent my career as a software engineer and teacher. And my goal now is to meaningfully help as many people as possible. YouTube is a big part of that strategy. And I'm also spending a lot of time building out an application called Taro. Taro is a private software engineer community focused on career growth. If you have multiple offers in hand, or if you've already joined the company and you want some guidance, some help to onboard and get promoted faster, then come join Taro. We have a really robust set of questions and answers and discussions that can really help you move the needle. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.